Hello folks, this is Ariel from Phi Myth. I am doing a little intro today to what will hopefully become a whole series of tiny house cooking videos. I decided to do this because people have asked me a lot of questions about the cooking I do and how that is possible and what is possible living in a tiny house. I live in my tiny house here named Phi Myth. She's on wheels, on a trailer, she's about 170 square feet total, and my kitchen is about 50 square feet of that. And everything you see in a cooking video will pretty much occur in those 50 square feet. The reason I decided to try to do this, though I'm calling it Tiny House Cooking Videos, I think probably a better name would actually be Don't Be Scared of Cooking. The main thing I want to do with this is to encourage people to to try new things, to experiment, to learn to cook if you don't know how, to get better at it if you do know how, and just generally to be more comfortable making your own food. Making your own food is a pretty important skill, I think, because it's one of those necessary things for life. Everyone has to eat, and so it's useful even if it's not your favorite thing. It is personally one of my favorite things to do, um, but even if it's not, it's something good to know and be more comfortable with. But in general, what I've found is when people learn to cook more, it's for one, cheaper often than going out to eat. It is generally healthier than going out to eat. You're less, um, or buying processed foods or prepackaged the, you know, microwave dinners, that kind of thing. Um, even if you make junk food at home, you can make ice cream and donuts in your kitchen and know those aren't exactly health food, but you're still not very likely to reach for something like a chemical name that you might find on a lot of processed packaged foods like butylated hydroxythymine or something that I probably do not pronounce correctly, but it's a, a preservative that's in a lot of food and it is also in things like jet fuel. Sounds really exciting, like something you'd just love to have for dinner. So even if you make junk food in your kitchen, you're going to still manage to skip and avoid a whole ton of those nasty chemicals and other things you probably don't want to be eating anyway that are in packaged and processed food. So that's some of the reasons I encourage people to cook. Um, I hope that for everyone it can be something they really enjoy, but I realize that's probably not going to happen. But the main thing that I would like people to get from this, what will hopefully be a long series of videos, is to just try things. Don't be scared of cooking. I don't use a lot of recipes, you'll see that. I do a lot of dumping and pouring and just mixing random things. Um, I do a lot of similar recipes repeatedly, but, or similar meals repeatedly, but with um, slight variations depending on what's in season, what I have a lot of, what my kitchen is out of at the moment, all those kinds of things. While there are a few, there are very few um, things you're going to generally make for a meal that are really going to turn out to be a disaster if you don't follow a recipe very precisely. Um, for some people, I think, especially if you're unfamiliar with cooking, following a precise recipe can make you feel a little safer. But I also want to encourage you that it can be exciting to just try things in different combinations. And some you might like more, and some you might like less. But unless you put something that's actually positively poisonous in your food, um, you're going to end up with a result that you can eat, even if it wasn't quite what you dreamed about. Also, if things are not turning out right away quite the way you dream about, or if they just seem more stressful or um, time consuming or overwhelming than they look when you watch me, just so you know, a little bit of my cooking background is that I'm the oldest of seven children, so I grew up in a household of nine people. We did have a large garden where we grew and preserved a lot of our own produce. We also had various um, animals like goats for milk or chickens or turkeys for milk or, I'm sorry, for meat or eggs or things like a steer. Um, so I did have experience with all the ingredients from that kind of from scratch level on. And being the oldest and my mom being fairly busy with a bunch of small children and pregnancies and, and just general taking care of little ones, I got to do a lot of the cooking. I've been cooking since I was small enough to need a stool to be able to reach a countertop. So since I'm now 30, that means I have probably several decades more experience with this than you do if you've never tried. So just keep trying. If, if you don't get the perfect result the first try, please don't be discouraged. Like I said, unless you put poison in it, you're going to end up with something you can eat. And the more you do uh, of cooking and experimenting with things, the better you'll get at it. Probably the more fun it will be, and certainly the easier and less stressful it will become. 
if you think about when you learned to walk, you probably fell on your face and on your butt quite a few times, but now I imagine you walk fairly well. Cooking is fairly similar. I think unless, um, unless you have a serious physical disability, like you're a quadriplegic and you're in a wheelchair, you can probably learn to cook. If your dream is to be a star basketball player and you're only four foot something inches tall, that probably isn't going to happen because there are physical limitations that are going to prevent that. If, however, you want to learn to cook, it doesn't really matter, like I said, short of being completely paralyzed. Um, if you practice, you will get better and you will be able to do it. It's something anybody can learn. I really do believe that. And so that is probably the main thing I'm excited about is helping people to, like I said, not be scared of cooking and show you some ideas of what to try and how to try things and just make people generally more comfortable with it, uh, their kitchens and food and health and all of those things. So that's what you'll be seeing. As I said, this will all happen in my kitchen in my tiny house on wheels, which is off grid in the Western mountains. I will hopefully give you lots more info with each video, but if you need to, if you're interested in checking out um, just more info on the house, I have a whole series of videos specifically on the house. They're all named findeth number something and a whole series of videos on the wildlife that walks by my windows. But this video series is just going to cover cooking. So if you're interested in the other things, check them out. Either way, I appreciate all likes, comments, shares, subscribes. I'll try to answer questions and hopefully everyone will be inspired to cook something for yourself or somebody else.